We welcome everybody here at the Capitol. Um, so you won't hear, I know that at times Mr. Vanderhart's talked about other states where people talk about people being nutty or whatever. You won't hear that. But I do want to have some refutation on a few points that were made. First off, how this came to be, and, and let me state since I'm the person speaking, that virtual, virtually every educational group in the state and multiple business groups in the state have expressed their opposition to this bill. So it's quite a coalition of people that are there on it. And we certainly have our, our opposition to it as well. Um, first off, the description of how this came to be. This is something that the legislature voted on. It is in our state law. All of the worst case scenarios that we've heard about what the core will lead to, we presently have the core. It is in Iowa already. And so when you hear things about books being forced upon uh, local districts, example, we state emphatically here to this group that every district has their right to a local decision on their books. And if at any point a district claims that this a book decision may be because of this, please let us know at the Department of Ed. We will correct that immediately. So it's totally local choice on that. State board, so the state legislature gave this authority to the State Board of Education. That has been incorrectly described at times as being a secretive item. They handled this item like every other item on their agenda. Every other single item, it was in the public, it was discussed in the public, and it was brought to them to approve. At any point they could decide to not do this, the legislature could decide to take away their authority, but this has been a totally open process. They were written by Iowans. There was long, extensive work with people in the field who came in and worked on this particular item. So this is not nationalization of education. And as I said earlier today, as a lifelong Iowan, as a former educator, as a former lawmaker here, and yes, as a conservative Republican, and there are folks in the country like the, the Jeb Bloches and Mike Huckabees that are supportive of this measure, let me state that I do find it ironic to hear about the nationalization of education from three of our friends who are not from this state. As an Iowan, let me say that this process has been done by Iowans, and it is subject to total approval by the legislature. We believe that this would be a step backward because not only does it take away the core in Iowa, it also allows for local voluntary standards. So it's actually a step back from um, the fact that a district could choose to have no standards at all. There are certainly costs involved. The gentleman talks about costs, as I shared this morning. You look at, at the rosiest scenario would be the cost, and we all would grant him that cost in the rosiest scenario. But we also understand that there will be computerization over the next 17 years, as he, his figures go over 17 years. There will be professional development at that time. There will be a lot of, Iowa, uh, of work in Iowa schools on professional development standards, all of those things. So it's not like absent this, there wouldn't be those costs. But if we granted fully that those were the costs, you have to remember <coughs> that in the next 17 years, uh, state school aid and, and property tax associated with that bless you, uh, would be um, would be a sum of around seventy two billion dollars. So we're looking at 0.25 of one percent of state school spending in comparison to that. And most likely it will be lower than that because that's the worst case scenario of zero percent allowable growth um, over that time span or supplemental state aid, I guess we call it now. But that would be the that would be that that framework. So when we hear how could the state possibly afford it, likely these would be the costs. I think the one gentleman's from Nebraska. They have their own system. They've not joined into this. They have had costs that they have had to spend on standards. And I, I think the neighborhood of those would be comparable to what's being spent here, if not more. Um, so finally, our, our, voluntary, our voluntary nature of this. We can choose to remove and get out of this at any point. Florida has done so with the park assessment. Um, as one example earlier today, has decided to opt out of that. If that's such a choice, we as a state have that total choice. The governor and the legislature can get out of this at any time. So be it. That's how it is. So I think there's a lot of misinformation. I think it's well intended, but um, that, that's floating around the internet, floating around that people have. But at the end of the day, this is an Iowa set of standards that local communities have their choices to enact and to do what they'd like to do in it. And I think it would be a tremendous step backwards. And the governor has stated it many times that when we state, stand to put, put, and we're one of the last states to have standards uh, to, to go to this level, that we saw Iowa go from the industry of national leader to middle of the pack. We believe that there is a point to be had in uh, continuing the work that's been done in Iowa. And we believe that uh, that's why the business and education community are united in opposition to
of this concept, and we'll agree to agree to disagree on this one, but we'll work together on other issues that have a chance.